as a journalist, I hear Kubernetes, Kubernetes, Kubernetes everywhere. But there are a lot of people who have investment in Cloud Foundry and those are some large you know, deployments there. So first of all, what I want to know is since any nice is investing in both Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry. So can you talk about what kind of share looks like when it comes to Cloud Foundry users versus Kubernetes users? And I also don't want to make it Kubernetes versus Cloud Foundry, but just to get an idea of uh, Cloud Foundry users there. And then second piece of question that I would ask separately would be that, what about those users who have heavy investments in Cloud Foundry? Are they being left high and dry because everybody's moving to Kubernetes or they can continue with the investments they have made? I mean, Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes is not a contradiction at all. Uh, as we've uh, discussed in, in earlier uh, sessions, Cloud Foundry has uh, been redeveloping uh, its own uh, container orchestration several times, adding Kubernetes as the new prime standard for container orchestration um, is a natural um, evolution for Cloud Foundry. And Cloud Foundry still offers a higher level of abstraction than Kubernetes does. So it's never Cloud Foundry against Kubernetes. The question that um, keeps minds of Cloud Foundry users busy is more about Bosch versus Kubernetes where uh, Bosch is currently being used to deploy uh, Cloud Foundry and uh, Kubernetes could be the way to go in the future. So if, uh, if I look into our more recent uh, clients that joined AnyNines, I can say that it is very important for them that we have both uh, a, a classic Cloud Foundry stack as well as we help them to operate and maintain those stacks uh, as long as they want to, as long as it is technical, meaningful, and possible. And on, and on the other hand, um, show them a perspective on how to migrate those platforms uh, towards Kubernetes. So by adding those modules to the any nights platform, um, we we still keep on um, you know delivering all those cloud, classic Cloud Foundry environments and provide a, a path of migration uh, if clients want to move over to Cloud Foundry over time. We are performing many tests internally to advise customers when it is the right time to do that. And in my humble opinion, the classic environments, I mean, for the for more heavyweight users where there are already a lot of applications and there's a lot of load and so on, a classic Cloud Foundry environment is still a perfect choice and often even the rec recommended choice. And Operating these environments is something um, that it can be quite a hassle. So the kinds of customers we see, they have one or two problems. The first problem is they're using Cloud Foundry based on its open source edition, but they, they kind of feel a struggle because they have only a limited number of platform operators within their companies, and it keeps them rather busy to uh, deploy Cloud Foundry and keep it up to date, keep it secure. So these clients often uh, migrate to uh, the AnyNines platform distribution because it's just much easier for them. We provide them with a solid release management, tested releases that they can download. And if they want us to operate that and perform these upgrades, we'll do that. That is a pain relief they are actually very happy with. Like the other side of the coin is those customers with commercial Cloud Foundry vendors. And I have to tell, we are not really charging for Cloud Foundry. What we are charging for is the solution as a whole, as well as the automation that ships with it, as well as the services we provide. So it's, it's including support and um, often including a full remote management. So not to, to forget about the data services that is quite unique uh, as an offering. So these uh, other clients, they come from uh, contracts that are often, in their opinion, very expensive and are happy to join any nines to reduce costs, especially in these challenging times. 